Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So today we're reading from Canto 6, Chapter 4. The chapter is entitled Ahamsa Guya Prayers, and this is text number 31. <laughs> Yachaktayo vadatam vinam vai Vidvara sambhara bhuva bhavanti Kurvanti chai sammahor atma moham Tasmai namo dhanta gunhaya bhunhe Chaktayo vadatam badinam bhai Vibhara sambhara bhuvo bhavanti Purvanti chai sammaho atma moham Tasmai namo nanta gunaya bhunhe Yachaktayo matvadatam vadinam bhai Vibhara sambhara bhuvo bhavanti Kurvanti chai sammohor atma moham Tasmai namo nanta gunhaya bhunhe Yachataya, whose multifarious potencies, Vadatam, speaking different philosophies, Vadinam, of the speakers, Vai, indeed, Vivada, of argument, Samvada, and agreement, Bhuva. The causes, Bhavanti, are, Bhavanti, create, 
cha and a sum of them, the theorist Mahur, continuously, Atmamoham, bewilderment regarding the existence of the soul, Tasmai, of him, Namaha, my respectful obeisances, Ananta, unlimited, Unaya, possessing transcendental attributes, Bhumne, the all-pervading Godhead. Translation purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Let me, this is, uh, this is uh, the Hamsaguyam prayers, and these prayers are made famous by Daksha. So Daksha is speaking these prayers to the Lord. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto the all-pervading Supreme Personality of Godhead, who possesses unlimited transcendental qualities, acting from within the core of the hearts of the all-philosophers who propagate various views, he causes them to forget their own souls, while sometimes agreeing and sometimes disagreeing among themselves. Thus he creates within the material world a situation in which they are unable to come to, con to a conclusion. I offer my obeisances unto him. So, Daksha. Now, the purport is quite long, so please listen up. Since time immemorial, or since the creation of the cosmic manifestation, the conditioned souls have formed various parties of philosophical speculation. But this is not true of the devotees. Non-devotees have different ideas of creation, maintenance, and annihilation, and therefore they are called bodies and pratyavadis, proponents and counter-proponents. It is understood from the statement of Mahabharata that there are many munis or speculators. Tarko pratishta sutiram bibinnam nasa rishim yasya matam labinnam. All speculators must disagree with other speculators. Otherwise, why should there be so many opposing parties concerning with ascertaining the supreme cause? Philosophy means finding the ultimate cause. As Vedanta Sutra very reasonably says, Adato Brahma Jigyasa. Human life is meant for understanding the ultimate cause. Devotees accept that the ultimate cause is Krishna because this conclusion is supported by all Vedic literatures and also by Krishna himself, who says, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo, I am the source of everything. Devotees have no problem understanding the ultimate cause of everything, but non-devotees must face many opposing elements because everyone who wants to become a prominent philosopher invents his own way. In India, there are many parties of philosophers, such as the Dvaitavadis, Advaitavadis, Vaisheshikas, Mimamsakas, Mayavadis, and Svabhavavadis. And each of them oppose the others. Similarly, in the Western countries, there are also many philosophers with different views of creation, life, maintenance, and annihilation. Thus, it is undoubtedly a fact that there are countless philosophers throughout the world each of them contradicting the others. Now, one may ask why there are so many philosophers if the ultimate goal of philosophy is one. Undoubtedly, the ultimate cause is one, the Supreme Brahman. As Arjun told Krishna in Bhagavad Gita 10, 12, Param Brahmam, Param Dhamam, Pavitram, Paramam Bhavam, Purusham Shashvatam Divyam, Adi Devam Ajam Vibhum. Translation, you are the Supreme Brahman, the ultimate, the Supreme Boat, and purified, the absolute truth and the eternal divine person. You are the primeval God, transcendental and original, and you are unborn and all-pervading. Non-devotee speculators, however, do not accept an ultimate cause, sarva karna karnam. Because they are ignorant and bewildered concerning the soul and its activities, even though some of them have vague ideas of the soul, 
Many controversies arise and the philosoph philosophical speculators can never reach a conclusion. All of these speculators are envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 16, 1920. <laughs> Asurim yonem apanam mura janmani janmani mama prapyaiva konteya tatoyatya dharma gatim. Those who are envious and mischievous, who are the lowest of men, are cast by me in the ocean of material existence in various demonic species of life. Attaining repeated birth among the species of demonic life, such persons can never approach me. Gradually, they sink down to the most abominable type of existence. Unquote. Because of their envy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, non devotees are born in demonic families life after life. They are great offenders, and because of their offense to the Supreme Lord, He keeps them always bewildered. Kurvanti Chaisham Mohur Atma Moham. The Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, purposely keeps them in darkness. Atma Moham. The great authority, Parasara, the father of Yasudev, explains the Supreme Personality of Godhead thus. Jnana Shakti Balaskarya Virya Tejyam Asheshataha Bhagavachadam Vachchani Vinaheyar Hunadibihi Demonic speculators cannot understand the transcendental qualities, form, pastime, strength, knowledge, and opulence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which are all free from material contaminations. Vina heya guna dibihi. These speculators are envious of the existence of the Lord. Jaga ahur anishvaram. Their conclusion is that the entire cosmic manifestation has no controller, but it's just working naturally. Thus they are kept in constant darkness, birth after birth, and cannot understand the real cause of all causes. This is the reason why there are so many schools of philosophical speculation. Om Ajnan Timirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padantika Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasari Golda Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare so, Prabhupada gave a wonderful purport describing how there are so many ways that people try to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and these have been formed in different types of philosophies since time immemorial. Now, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Sarvasi Jaham Riddhisani Bisto, Matats. As it says here in the translation, these different philosophers and speculators, some philosophers, some speculators, are bewildered by the Lord because they don't really accept the authorized process for understanding the Supreme Lord. They want to be known as great philosophers. And if someone has the same philosophy as that person, I have to come up with something different. <laughs> so, yata mata tata pata, isn't it? You're okay, I'm okay, your philosophy is fine, my philosophy is fine. Do your own thing. This whole world is ultimately not controlled by anything. It's simply based on sense gratification. The whole process is to eat, drink, be merry, and enjoy, and die, <laughs> of course. <laughs> that's it, but that's an ultimate conclusion of their happiness. So this goes on in the name of so many apparent 
very intricate philosophical systems. And these are very prominent within the world. And therefore, unless we understand clearly what Srila Prabhupada is giving from the present and previous acharyas, it's very easy to become sidetracked or at least seem to imbibe some of these principles that are what we call asampradayas or philosophical teachings that are actually taking away from the ultimate conclusion. What is the ultimate conclusion? We sing it every day in the prayers to the spiritual master that the spiritual master gives divyam. Divyam, what is his divyam? Divyam is that he teaches you are the ultimate, your only understanding or your only position is that you are spirit, soul, part and parcel with Krishna and your duty is to serve the Lord in devotion. And there are nine ways to serve the Lord. That's all. That's the ultimate principle. So all these other philosophers, as Prabhupada gives them some concession in this purport, he says they have some idea of the truth. And therefore they have a little bit of understanding. But because, and here's where the conclusion comes, that because they're envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Lord bewilders them, and they create more and more different types of ideas and philosophical, philosophical systems in order to somehow present themselves as great philosophers. And there's always more and more philosophies coming up. Yeah. You always read about somebody who comes, he's got another idea on how we should live life and what is life all about. If it wasn't for Srila Prabhupada, we'd be lost. <laughs> really lost in an ocean of speculation. We even see within ISKCON, in the early days of ISKCON, there were some ideas that were contrary to Srila Prabhupada's teachings. And these ideas presented themselves in a very, what we say, what we say, acceptable way. And what was the idea? That Srila Prabhupada, he's very humble. We all know that. But he's actually the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He's God himself, but he's not actually saying that. So, but we actually know that because of his humility, he's not presenting that. But he is actually the incarn he's actually an incarnation of the Lord himself. This was in 1970 in Nuvrindavan. Some of the deviations start. Nuvrindavan has a history of these things. <laughs> of course, I think now it's changed. That's good. I can say that because I spent 20 years in New Vrindavan. <laughs> and uh, Prabhupada, when the word got back to Prabhupada, at that time we were only chanting Prabhupada's first part of his pranam mantra, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamane. When Prabhupada realized what was going on, he was in Japan at the time, and that he sent word that now we should add a second part to his pranam mantra. Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Sunyavadi, Pasyatya De Satarine. So we could understand his actual position and his mission. His mission was to bring the teachings of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the Western world and to destroy the philosophies of impersonalism, Mayavadism, and Voidism, which are very much prominent in today's society. Of course, in Western society, people don't so much philosophically have an understanding of this, but they live in that way. <laughs> they live in that consciousness that ultimately, if there is a Supreme Personality of Godhead, he's meant simply to support our material happiness, that's all. <laughs> or he's there as to our order supplier. Or he actually was existing at one time and he no longer exists now. That famous philosopher Nietzsche, he said, God is dead. <laughs> so somebody wrote, on one, you know, just like you see sometimes on outside, people write on walls or on train stations. 
Somebody wrote, God is dead, Nietzsche. And somebody wrote underneath this, Nietzsche is dead, God. <laughs> Prabhupada liked that a lot. <laughs> when the devotees told him that. So, um, these, there's so many ways that people want to speculate on the absolute truth. Uh, there was one... I remember when I was growing up, I had heard about, but never really heard him. There was one famous atheist, he was traveling all over America. And he would give these lectures on atheism. He became quite popular. I can't remember his name now. But one of the things he would do as part of his lecture, and toward the end of his lecture, he would say, there is no God, and I can prove it to you right now. I dare him, and he would challenge God in a very, what we say, arrogant way, that if there's God, then let him strike me dead right now. And then he would stop his lecture and wait five full minutes. And he would say, I'll give him five minutes. And then after five minutes, of course, you know, God doesn't listen to these nonsense people anyway. So, you know, he said, see... That proves there is no God. Yeah, that's a great, yeah, you actually proved it. People would actually believe that. But then we understood, he's dead now. <laughs> but Krishna's not going to listen to him and kill him when he wants to be killed. He kills him according, according to the timetable. So there are so many speculators on the absolute truth. But we have understood from our teachers from Srila Prabhupada, and from the Shastras. Therefore, devotees should very carefully understand the philosophical teachings that establishes Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And one of the most important verses is Ishwar Parma Krishna, Satchit Ananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarvakarna Karnam. This is from the Brahma Samhita. The Brahma Samhita establishes the complete principle of the absolute truth in all aspects of the absolute truth. Srimad Bhagavatam is more or less an expansion of the philosophical teachings that glorify the absolute truth, teach the principles of personalism, and at the same time teach the process for realizing. The Brahma Samhita gives that same understanding in a more of a nutshell type of presentation, only 62 verses. It's very difficult to understand, but if you read and study that Brahma Samhita, everything is there. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati took the commentaries of his father, Srila Bhakti Vinoda Kaur, and translated them from Bengali into English, and write what we now have present in our ISKCON society as the Brahma Samhita. But Bhakti Vinoda Kaur got those commentaries from Shiva Jiva Goswami, who carefully studied the principles of, of, of Brahma Samhita and explained everything in detail. When Srila Prabhupada was asked, your spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta, he writes in such high philosophical language, how are you going to ever understand anything? Why don't you write a commentary yourself? on Brahma Samhita. It's such an important philosophical scripture. Srila Prabhupada said, you just read it over and over and over again and finally you will understand it. <laughs> That's what he wanted us to do in order to understand his teachings. That is very difficult in first experience to understand the philosophical teachings of the nature of the absolute truth in relationship to everything else. But if we carefully read Prabhupada's books going over them over and over again, and as Srila Prabhupada says, by doing that gradually the meanings will become clearer and clearer and clearer. That is the way to approach scripture. It's not a about how much you read, but it's more or less how much you can understand by whatever you read. So Prabhupada used that point to make in relationship to the Brahma Samhita, which is very difficult to understand, but we even understand Prabhupada's... I was just reading this purport, and I was reading it over and over again, and every time I was reading it, there was another point 
that was available. Shri Pallad Nishingadev Ki Jai. There was, there was more and more points. So in my own experience, and just reading this purport, I found more and more points each time you read. So this is the nature of transcendental knowledge. It's dynamic, it's not static. Material knowledge or material philosophical teachings are limited. You've got a certain understanding and that's as much as you can get. But transcendental knowledge given by the pure devotees of the Lord, especially Srila Prabhupada, are their ecstasies in devotional service, as Srila Prabhupada said. And by reading them over and over again, more and more meanings come out, and it's unlimited. Prabhupada was on a morning walk with Professor Durkheim in Germany in 1975, I think it was. 75, yeah. And uh, they were discussing philosophy, and Prabhupada was talking about the Srimad Bhagavatam. And he said, there are 18,000 verses in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And it takes approximately one month to understand each verse. And then some devotee walking with Prabhupada said, uh, no, Prabhupada said, he turned to one devotee, he said, how long is that? And one devotee calculated, that is 1,500 years, which is correct. And Prabhupada said, well, you have enough to read. <laughs> It'll take a little time to understand the Srimad Bhagavatam, maybe a few thousand lifetimes. <laughs> so this knowledge is compact and it's, uh, it's unraveled through the constant association with this knowledge and at the same time as we purify our heart through the process of devotional service, we get more and more understanding. The philosophical speculators who come up with their own philosophies. Krishna Das Kavi Jai Sisi Radha Madhava Asta Sakti Ki Jai. Krishna Das Kavi Raj Goswami in his Chaitanya Charitamrita, in the fourth chapter of Adi Lila, he's about to describe the internal reasons why Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. Now these reasons are very confidential and very, very difficult to understand, even for the devotees. Now he's hesitant, and he writes about his hesitancy in some of the verses, that if I make this knowledge available, this will be read by the non-devotees. And therefore I'm, I'm hesitant to write. But in the same time, in the next verse he said, but I'm very happy to, to declare that the camel-like non-devotees can never understand this. <laughs> and therefore I will write. <laughs> because unless one engages in devotional service to the Lord, which is the process for submission to this knowledge, without devotional service, nothing becomes revealed. That's why people, so many philosophers and academicians and other types of persons approach Shastra and they write very, what we say, philosophical and elaborate commentaries and speculations. But Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says it's like licking the bottle of honey. They can't go inside because they're envious of the Lord and they simply do not perform devotional service. Aruna Krishchena Padam Padam Padantiyada Naritya Usmaya Ahangrayaha. Even those who are philosophers and speculators who have the impersonal aspect of the understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth, ultimately because they don't engage in devotional service, ultimately padantiyada, they fall down from whatever position they obtain by their philosophical knowledge and practice of various yogis and come back to the material world to take up material activities again. But Prabhupada says the devotees, they can understand this philosophy. They can understand what is the absolute truth. Why? Because they're engaged in devotional service of the Lord. Yasya Devi para bhaktir, yata Devi tata guru, tasyaita kartite yata prakasadanta mahatmanaha. This is such an amazing verse. It's from the 
Svetasvatara Upanishads, and it explains that one who has faith, but it doesn't say faith, it says implicit faith. That faith that's not broken in any situation, in both the Lord and the spiritual master, then all the imports of all Vedic knowledge is automatically revealed within the heart of the practitioner. So what are they saying? That faith automatically allows one to understand this knowledge. And that's how knowledge is revealed. Knowledge, the level of knowledge we can attain is based on the level of faith we have in the process of devotional service. That's why Prabhupada would always encourage us, if you have any doubts, please get them cleared. Don't keep doubts in your mind. Doubts about the process, doubts about the instructions of the spiritual master, or sometimes even devotees have doubts about their own ability to execute the process. That's another kind of doubt. And I'm not qualified, and I can see it in myself. But that means you're focusing on yourself and not on the mercy of the Lord. The mercy of the Lord, Ukam karoti vachalam pangu lagate girim yat kripa tamaham bande shigaru dhirnitarinam Prabhupada quotes the, he said, even a fool can give a great class. <laughs> Why? Because he's simply accepting the mercy of his spiritual master and therefore he can speak authoritatively. So there's where the mercy comes. And that's true about any aspect of our process of devotional service. In and of ourselves, we are small. The nature of the jiva is to become bewildered by the external energy of the Lord. And because of that bewilderment, there's always confusion on what to do, how to do it, how to understand this. Therefore, if one takes shelter of the spiritual master in devotional service and hears regularly. The process of understanding is a process of constant hearing from the spiritual master and from those who are qualified in disciplic succession. And that constant hearing awakens within us the understanding of this knowledge. And then the process of devotional service gives us the realization of this knowledge. But here, going back to the text itself, the non-devotees, they'll speak philosophy for lifetimes after lifetimes and never come to conclusion. Krishna within their heart just keeps giving them different ideas on what is wrong. <laughs> Isn't Krishna so kind? <laughs> He's very merciful. They don't want anything to do with him, but they want to use the knowledge of spiritual philosophy to become prominent and popular or known so therefore Krishna says all right you want to be known but be known as a fool <laughs> that's a, pretty much that's it another add one another fool to the you know the, the, the level of philosophies we call them philosophies, uh, you know, philosophies, philosophies, not philosophies you know, because it's another way to get fooled <laughs> so Therefore, if we carefully hear from Srila Prabhupada, and especially from Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada said, I put everything in these two books, then everything becomes clear. What is that clear? That I'm eternal servant of Krishna, and my only activity is to render devotional service to the Lord in a, in a loving way. That is simply the, the philosophy in a nutshell. And Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. <laughs> Another of the deviant ideas of many of the philosophers is that they worship the Lord in his various forms, but they think the forms are simply manifestations of the impersonal aspect of the Lord. And therefore they use the forms because they say you need form in order to worship, but beyond the form is the reality. So after worshiping the forms, they throw the forms away because they have attained whatever they're attaining. What is that the attainment they have? They have the, some understanding that they understand that they're not this body. Mm -hmm. And that's as best they can get from that kind of worship. And they think the Supreme Personality of Godhead is unmanifest and that is the highest aspect. But 
but it says that in Krishna's body, although Krishna has a transcendental form, everything is within his form himself. Just like we understand, what is that verse? Kali Kale Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar. That Krishna has come in the sound of his name. This name of Krishna is none different than Krishna. All the names, all the forms, all the pastimes, all the qualities, all the attributes, all everything is in the sound of Krishna's name. So that's true about all aspects of the absolute truth. And his form, his qualities, his names, his pastimes are complete and perfect. And therefore, the absolute truth is never less in any of its manifestations. Therefore, when they see something like form, they think form is limited. But that's material form. Spiritual form is unlimited. Because Krishna is unlimited in all aspects of himself. And he carries on the, the system of function simply by his various energies. So, therefore, we should very much avoid hearing from others and simply hear from Srila Prabhupada and the authorized acharyas. And then we will never become bewildered on the process of devotional service. So I'll stop there. Any questions? Yes. Do we have a microphone? <laughs> Can you speak really loudly? I'll try to repeat what you say. Maharaj, thanks for support for the class. And uh, you said about speculations that when speculations are going on, it's clear that uh, even to understand Srila Prabhupada fully has been a little difficult for to speak of Krishna. Mm -hmm. One thing is very clear that Krishna says, Yatha Gamu Tatha Bhaya. Where there are cows, I want to stay amidst cows. I want to stay amidst cows. Krishna says that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he wants to have makhan, ghee and milk and all those things. Mm -hmm. And understanding this very clearly, Srila Prabhupada uh, wanted us to have this lifestyle where we can have cows around Krishna and around us. And he tasted Vrindavan in the form of new Vrindavan in America. 40 years back when this corn was just budding. Mm -hmm. Now, after 40 years later, when so much of maturity is supposed to come in, so much of deep understanding of Srila Prabhupada and Krishna is supposed to have taken place, uh, how is it that uh, instead of Vrindavan being copy pasted elsewhere, how is it that America and Mumbai is being copy pasted in Vrindavan, Sridham Vrindavan? America has been copy pasted in Sridham Vrindavan, and Mumbai and America has been copy pasted in Mayapur and Vrindavan, where there are buildings coming up that are village of cows. And so many practical, so called practical excuses are given for that. We should ask the planners for that question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, really know how to answer that one. <laughs> is it that a lot of speculation is still going on? Or is, is it that we want to take what we want from Srila Prabhupada's teaching? And well, what Prabhupada wanted us, he said, come to the, come to the to Gaur Purnima festival every year and sit down with all the leaders and make a plan on how to you know, keep pushing on this movement. So that's what he wanted. So the DBC and also the various committees are doing that. So gradually, gradually we're seeing more and more of the Prabhupada's, uh, Prabhupada's ideas for spreading Krishna consciousness are starting to manifest. But it's not complete and perfect yet. We're still working on perfection. <laughs> So sometimes we go off and sometimes we get it. <laughs> because look at, the, look at our movement. It's a quite diverse. I mean, there's people from all around the world. And there's different ideas on how to execute Srila Prabhupada's mission. And basically, those ideas are welcome as long as the principles are not changed. So therefore, we have to understand the basic principles of what Prabhupada wanted. And one of the principles you mentioned is more or less simple living. The simple living. Prabhupada wanted us to live simply. <laughs> and that way we would have enough time, energy, and what we say, focus on Krishna conscious practice like that. 
if we get into too much gorgeous living, then there's no time and then we get diverted by those activities. So simple living means a living according to what you need. Ishavasham idam sarvam yat kijit tam jigat tena jaktena bunjitaha magridaha kusiswidanam. First verse in Sri Yashupanishad explains that if one lives according to their quota and understands everything is owned and controlled by the Supreme Personality of God, the next verse says, then one can aspire to live for hundreds of years. So that is always a constant feature of struggle, how to live according to our needs. So we all come from different backgrounds and we have all from different experiences on how to live. But basically the principle is to live in such a way that whatever you do supports your practice of devotional service and not takes away from it. That's the principle of simplicity. Simplicity means something is that one person may live more gorgeously or more opulent than the other, but the point is, are you Krishna conscious? Are you, that's the whole thing. So that's, that's the understanding. Whatever we do has to support our Krishna consciousness. So as far as the big plans are concerned, I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm not involved in that directly. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, Maha... Mahalakshmi. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for your class. You mentioned that uh, to understand Srimad Bhagavatam, we need, I don't know how many thousands of lives. Don't, don't, don't stick around for that long. Finish up in this life. <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has made it easier. <laughs> So what is, oh, is it easier or is it not easy? That's answered in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the fourth canto, where Prabhupada poses the question. It's in the purport where Dhruva Maharaj is giving, getting instructions from Narada Muni. And Prabhupada poses the rhetorical question. Some people say that Krishna consciousness or the process of Krishna consciousness is easy and some people say it's difficult. So what is it, easy or difficult? Arriba. <laughs> so then Prabhupada answers it. He says, for those who have determination, it's easy. And for those who don't, it's difficult. So that's the point. Those who are determined in the execution will find it easier and easier. As soon as we give up our determination, determination is strengthened by our association and by our renunciation. The more we renounce sense gratification, the easier it is to become determined. So determination is the factor. Does that help? Thank you. Anything else? Is there any other questions? Okay. It looks like it. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Kita. Srimad Bhagavatam Kita.